What's up everyone, my name is Nick and I am a super nice guy. Today I'm here to discuss Google's Material Design 3, which was released sometime last October. I'll be walking through this amazing fresh content and share some of my thoughts around why I think it's a wonderful resource to follow. But what exactly is Material Design? Material Design is Google's design language, which launched in 2014 and is really just a set of guidelines and design practices to give a consistent look to Android applications. And Material 3 is the latest iteration, which has moved forward leaps and bounds of what Android apps can actually look like. Let's jump in. All right, so here we are on the Material website and you'll notice it's called Material U and that is because Google says it's the most expressive design system yet. Specifically with these dynamic colors, the Android applications will take on a color system based on the user's wallpaper. So that's a key difference between this and past Material designs. But the main reason I wanted to talk about this is specifically because it is just a wonderful design feat in and of itself. From the design approach of this website to the actual components and the way everything is detailed with specs and guidelines, it is just massively impressive. So if we just look down at what's new here, we see that dynamic color I was just talking about. There's a lot of attention called towards designing for foldable devices as those grow in popularity and that the system also includes design tokens. So changing app wide colors globally is made way easier with implementing design tokens in the code. We also have some additional resources down here at the bottom, which include a theme builder that shows how exactly this color system is working. So if you add your wallpaper, the colors will change dynamically and it actually has a different set of colors which you can cycle through here to see different examples of pulling from the same wallpaper colors. They've actually went ahead and created the same thing in a Figma plugin. So if you're designing Android native applications, you're able to quickly vet out different potential color systems and make it as real as possible and adhere to Material 3 guidelines. And then the last thing that I will call out, which I'm gonna walk through in detail because it's just fantastic, that is the Figma design kit that they've added to the community pages in Figma and anybody can download it and work from it directly. And jumping into some of these foldable devices and how they talk about it, it's really interesting, but really we have a folded device that looks like a longer phone, a longer smartphone. And then when it's unfolded, it really just looks like a tablet, but they're differentiating between what's a horizontal and what's a vertical. They're referring to horizontal orientation as unfolded landscape and vertical as unfolded portrait. And they also get into detailing reachability practices for these devices. So not having interactions in the upper area of the screen as much as possible because it's harder to reach and not putting things in the very bottom right corner such as floating action buttons. They also talk about the center hinge where the actual device folds and they have some rules around how to treat things like that like separating content into two halves essentially and keeping dialogues to one side of either one of those halves and not placing it directly in the middle where the hinge is and next we have the color overview of material which i think is really exciting it's definitely the most unique thing about this new skin of material design and it is dynamic colors that are pulled from a wallpaper image that a user might have on their phone. And with this including design tokens, it just makes it more flexible and consistent across a product using specific use cases for colors as opposed to specific set values. It's also wonderful that accessibility is baked into their dynamic color system. So no matter what color options are pulled out, they ensure that they will maintain accessibility for users. The way these colors are pulled out start from these five main swatches here of neutral colors and accent colors. The accent colors drive most of the look and feel with a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary. And we see here that a system is applied where the primary color is laid down and a surface on the primary will take on this shade, a primary container will take on this shade, and a surface on the primary container will take on this shade. And then it does the same thing for secondary and tertiary. 
Something that I thought was really interesting is that they apply this system to their semantic color for error as well. So if there's an error in the application, those actual semantic tones will take on a slightly different color of the theme you're using. I'd imagine that this has to be a very subtle adjustment, just being that red and semantics state there's an error and they don't want to muddy those waters at all. But if accessibility is baked into these colors, I know they kept that in mind when applying this to the semantic red. Next, we have the typography, which is laid out in a really beautiful way here. They have a type system defined in a display style, a headline style, title, label, and body. And they explain use cases for each of those examples here. They also illustrate how they approach responsive design with this type scale, even through foldable devices here. The scale is set up like a typical type scale, so actual styles will bump up in the type scale and they will be named the same but they will move up or down depending on the needs of the device. And then the last thing I wanted to call out here before jumping into Figma was the component section. Now, obviously there are a lot of components here, but I think it's a really great resource to look at and see how they're approaching everything from buttons to cards and chips to dialogues and seeing their specific guidelines around each one. What's really great if you're just getting into UI UX design and you're not too familiar with some of these things, Google Material Design will actually have specific guidelines that will tell you usage for using something like a card component. For example, here they say use a card to display content and actions on a single topic. Generally, that is a definition that should work across both Android and iOS. Things like a floating action button are more specific to Google material design and Android devices, but a lot of this can be applied in a global approach to understanding components and rules when designing things. And so that's the greatest benefit I see to really diving into and understanding material design guidelines. Even if you're not creating an actual Android application, just the amount of detail and specifications they've put around this design system is a work of art in itself. And being that there's also a Figma design kit, it goes an extra mile into actually showing us designers how these things are built and set up in a design application. So let's look at that now. All right, jumping into Figma, if we go into the community section and search Material 3 Design Kit, it will pop up here. Just make sure it's by Material Design because they're the official source that's keeping up to date and making sure this is connected one-to-one -one with Google and their design system. So I definitely recommend you get in here and download this, duplicate it and bring it into your file and just start picking it apart and seeing how things are put together. First off on the getting started page here, the first thing you're gonna see is just a little summary and linking back to the material source where typography in material can be sourced. The icons, which now exist in a Figma specific file, similar to this one, which is great. Colors, where we use the new dynamic color system, so material for you Figma plugin. And then a spot to give any feedback or anything. If there are errors or bugs or, or what have you, they will respond fairly quickly. So the way this file is set up is it has a styles and a components page. The styles are these more foundational elements such as color, typography, elevation, and elements like icons and so on. They also have listed over here their specific breakpoints that they go off of for responsive design. So they have 0 to 599 dp for extra small, small is 600 to 904, and so on and so forth, large is 1440 and larger. But perhaps one of my favorite things about this design system is the typography and the type scales. I think they've done a really good job at just limiting the amount of choices you have to make the system as efficient as possible. I do really love how they have three styles for a display, three styles for a headline, and then we have title in three styles, label in three styles, and body in three styles. When I was working agency side, I tried my hand at a few different approaches for type systems, and I found something similar to this being the most effective and easiest to wrap my mind around when creating a full design system. 
Aside from the content that lives in the styles page, we'll now jump into the components page where the majority of the content in this design kit exists. We have all of the component types laid out in individual frames and they are just the exact same ones we were looking at a moment ago on the material website. All of these are really great and informative to see how Google has taken their really complex system and organized it in a neat and understandable way. So when I'm looking at these, I'm even looking at the naming system for these buttons. I really appreciate that they've named filled buttons, outline buttons, text buttons, elevated and tonal. These could easily be called primary, secondary, tertiary, and so on, but I think having the names here adds an extra level of context into how this button can be used. If you've ever tried your hand at designing a design system and putting one together, you know that they're very complex and the bigger they get, the more complex they get and potentially confusing. And for this reason, that's why I think this is a great resource to reference because we can actually click into any of these components and read how it's supposed to be used. Buttons help people take action. Well, what about the filled button? The filled button is used for final or unblocking actions in a flow. High emphasis for the primary, most important or most common action on the screen. These rules are incredible and meticulous and I love it. The chips components are another one that I think are great and I love to reference because of all these different variations here. So within input chips alone, there's label only, label and trailing, label and icon, and so on. Assistive chips have their own set of variations and so do filter chips and suggestive chips. Another thing that's really great about this is what happens if I wonder what a chip is? I've forgotten. Well, I can just click this link here and go back to the material site and read about in detail how to use a chip and what not to do with chips. I always think text fields are another fun one to check out because there's a bunch of different types and styles and it looks like we have a standard text field and then we have text field with an icon so like a search and then we repeat that again for this outline style of text field. Something specifically that I'm looking at here that I find interesting from my own past work is that they don't have error text help text below this field built into the component. This is something I always have done because when I'm dropping this into the design, I like to toggle on error message here to make sure that it doesn't flow into the rest of the content and it fits comfortably and so on. But they've opted to not include that here and I just think it's curious. I'm not saying I am taking a side thinking it should be one or the other, just curious and making my own mental note. But in general, that's why I'm looking at this thing and why I love it so much is because this is just another approach from another team of how they've opted to organize a really complex system in a really flexible way. So ultimately, if I choose one thing and don't choose another, the resource itself has been really helpful to me just to see how it's laid out. And I love that there's a Figma file. All right, well, that was me walking through the Material 3 design system and the design kit in Figma. Like I said, I just really wanted to bring awareness to this awesome asset because it really is a great resource for the design community. I also just wanted to share what was going on in my brain when I'm seeing things like this and why I think they're super important. If you've never tried your hand at making a design system, I highly recommend you download this resource and you really take it apart and try to understand how it was put together and why. At the end of the day, there are a million different ways you could assemble your design system and name things in tons of different ways, but what's most important is that it's done in a way that makes sense. Hopefully it's simplified and taken the complex and made it simple and it's built to scale and it's built to be flexible and other designers can come in, take pieces and use it in what they're building. Well, I suppose that's about a wrap. So if you got something from this video, please remember to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments. And until next time, super nice guy out.